As someone who has posted only four videos so far, this course is released at the perfect time. It's packed with so much information. Keep watching and you'll know how good it is. Okay, a little introduction before we get into talking about the course. If you're not aware of MKBHD, Marcus Brownlee runs a very popular YouTube channel called MKBHD, where he mostly reviews gadgets and comments on the tech industry. As of April 2021, the channel has almost 14 million subscribers and a whopping 2.5 billion views. That's a billion with a B. Now, if you're not aware of Skillshare, it's a premium online learning platform with millions of members where creators post their courses for people who are interested in learning something new. So the platform has courses ranging from graphic design, uh, creative writing to photography and so much. It was actually a surprise to see MKBHD's course in the Skillshare homepage. Normally, you would see course teachers promoting their own courses on social media platforms. I guess I missed it. As soon as I saw it, I started watching it immediately. I didn't take any notes the first time, but once I got the idea to make this video, I started watching it a second time just to note down some pointers. First of all, before getting into the important stuff, let me give you this disclaimer. This is not a summary of the course. This is just a couple of key points that personally resonated with me, which I would love to incorporate in my own videos. That's about it. While watching the video, I wrote down about 20 points, but I'll be talking only about like seven points in this video. So if you want to learn more, I'd recommend you to watch the course. I have added timestamps to each of the points that I'll be discussing in the description below. Feel free to skip to the ones that might interest you. Let's get into it. Jacobs, this is the biggest one. I didn't even know something like this even existed. Let's just read the Wikipedia definition for the sake of it. A Jacob is a variant of a split edit film editing technique in which the audio from the following scenes overlap the picture from the preceding scene so that the audio portion of the later scene starts playing before its pictures as a lead in to the visual cut. So what this actually means is you will start hearing the audio of the next clip before even watching the video of the next clip. So in the Skillshare course, Marcus actually shows us how he does the J cuts in his editing process. He doesn't recommend it unless if we do it perfectly. I might be clueless about this whole thing, but from what I understood, you kind of have to nail it perfectly for this to work. So just as a practice, I tried making J cards in my previous video. You can watch this video in the information bar here. I don't think I nailed it, but I kind of gave it a try so that I can actually learn how to do it. Let's talk about scripting for a second. Marcus mentions in this course that he actually writes 98% of all the things that he speaks in the video. He talks a lot about writing down all the stuff that is important which needs to be accommodated in the video. So the goal of the video is to accommodate maximum amount of information in the minimum time without losing the interest of the viewer. He was talking in the context that people make purchase decisions based on his reviews. So it's crucial for him to make sure that he accommodates every aspect of the device in the video as much as possible. First couple of seconds in the video makes all the difference in your average viewing time. If the viewer doesn't get hooked onto the video, they'll just skip right over. So this is one of those things that I'm actually struggling with at the moment. So as a content creator, it's my responsibility to make sure that I value the time that my viewers spend in my channel. If I can't keep them interested in the first 15 seconds of the video, then it's kind of pointless to make a 10 minute video about whatever. So a very good tip that Marcus mentions in the video is that you could show what the video is all about in the very first 15 seconds of the video. It's not just that you show what's in the video in the first 15 seconds. It's very important to live up to that. You really don't want the viewers to leave the video disappointed. On the editing side of things, it's very hard to say, you know what, I like the video, the edit is fine. It's perfect, let's move. So there's always going to be something that you can actually do to make your video better. It might be a B-roll or a text animation or the audio quality or maybe a J-cut that just doesn't feel right. But we need to learn when to stop. When the edit reaches a point where it's decent enough and there are no noticeable mistakes, you make a full stop and go ahead to the export button. I've made four videos so far and trust me when I say this, every time I watch a video, I see about 100 mistakes. Instead of beating myself for it, I've started making a note of things so that I could improve those things in the next video. So another important thing about knowing when to stop will make sure that your video publishing schedule is on point. So know when to stop the edit. MKBHD mentioned in passing about the Betteridge Law of Headlines. As you might have assumed, this is in relation to how you title your video. In the course, MKBHD didn't explain much as to how this law works. So I went ahead and did some research on my own. Betteridge Law of Headlines states that any headline that ends in a question mark 
can be answered by the word no. It is named after Ian Betridge, who is a British technology journalist who wrote about it back in 2009. This is not his original concept because this principle has been around for a long time. NKBHD mentioned it in the course in relation to giving questions as YouTube titles. You must have seen videos in his channel that are sometimes a question like this. iPhone 13 confirmed. Why did LG phones really die? Why don't people buy Sony smartphones? I'm not sure as to how effective it is to give questions as headlines for your videos. I obviously have no idea, but I'm gonna try it in my future videos. Let's see how that goes. So this is something MKBHD suggested in the course. He said clearly that there is no reason for your followers to follow you on other platforms. If you want people to follow you, say in platforms like Instagram or Twitter, it's very crucial that you create content specific to those platforms. People have very different expectations from different platforms. Watching your YouTube video as an IGTV video is not fun all the time. So it's a good idea not to post content created for YouTube in other platforms. The whole objective of making YouTube videos is to make sure that you make interesting content. You make interesting videos, you might see some growth. A good way to see if your videos are boring is to get honest feedback from your friends. Most of your friends won't give you any negative criticism because they don't want to be rude to you. A better solution would be to watch your own video and see if you are interested into it or if it's boring. If you're not totally engaged in the video, then it's probably boring. I personally think it takes a lot of experimentation to really understand what is boring and what keeps the users uh, engaged into the video. I'm going to mention a couple of more tips that I picked up from the course. You need to watch the course to understand these tips better. Do two rounds of color correction. Don't plan your B-roll too much. It's good to give some room for creativity. Always look for unusual shots. As I mentioned earlier, these are some of the pointers that actually resonated with me. The course is filled with a lot of extremely useful tips like the ones that I explained earlier. I would highly recommend you to watch this course if that's possible. Skillshare is a great place to learn something, especially on the creative side like designing, photography, videography, writing and many other topics. I've had a Skillshare membership for about a year now and I have to say it's really great. Thanks Marcus for making a great course. I learned a lot from it. Keep up the good work. I hope you got something out of this one. I'll see you in the next one.